Hi everyone, this is Tamur. Welcome to my channel, The Cloud Security Guy, where on a weekly basis we talk about stuff pertaining to cloud security, uh, artificial intelligence, and general cybersecurity career advice. Uh, this week, I want to talk about a very important topic, which is how to get hands on experience, you know, through cloud security projects. A lot of people come to me and they say, okay, what can we do? What sort of cloud security projects can we do? And in what order to get hands on experience? So I thought it would be a good idea to just give some sort of a guidance based on my own experience, how I got cloud security experience, what sort of projects I did in order to like really get experience and get into the industry. Okay, so let's this week I want to talk about that. Uh, before we move ahead, guys, please do like and subscribe to this channel. Uh, and if you find this video to be useful, please like, subscribe, comment, share this video. It will really help for this video to reach as many, many people as possible, okay? So just to taking a step back, guys, if you've been watching my earlier series on, I've been covering all the certif certifications which are there on the cloud, right? And one recurring point I kept mentioning is to have hands-on experience. You need to do cloud security projects. You need to have hands-on experience. Hands-on experience will always be greater than any certification because certification will only take you so far. And without practical experience, you will face challenges in your career, okay? But uh, the, the problem a lot of people do face, like, okay, even if you agree with me, and you want to get cloud security experience. The problem which happens is uh, this one. If you've seen this meme before, I always find it funny. So you need to get experience, but to get that experience, you need a job. And you can't get a job because you don't have experience, right? So this is like the, this is a very, unfortunately, it's a funny meme, but it's also a very uh, true, true fact. So in order to get cloud security experience, you need to get a cloud security job, but you can't get a cloud security job because you don't have cloud security experience. So that is where the problem comes in. A lot of people come up to me and say, okay, how do we get this? Because employers are asking for cloud security experience and I don't have it. So this is what I want to focus on. I was in the same issue before also. I had the same issues. So I just want to tell you how I got actual hands-on experience without uh, having a full-time cloud security job, okay? So the good, good news is instead of waiting around like months for an employer to like uh, take a chance on you and say, okay, even if you don't have cloud security experience, I want to hire you. You don't need to wait for that. I have listed on some simple steps uh, you can follow to get hands-on experience today. I mean, starting from today, uh, you can start getting cloud security experience. If you're new to the cloud, then follow these steps in sequence. Don't skip ahead without completing the previous one. If you get stuck in the technicalities of any of the steps, trouble you shoot it to yourself, okay? Don't give up. The vast majority of cloud security experience and knowledge you will get, believe me, you will get through troubleshooting. When you, something doesn't work and you try to figure out why it's not working, that knowledge which you get, believe me, you will never ever forget. And that will stay with you. And that is the experience which is gonna help you out in your career, okay? So don't just give up and say, okay, I'll get somebody else to do it. I'll, don't ask me, try to do it yourself first, okay? So first step will be, guys, please set up a cloud sandbox. What do I mean? If you've heard the concept of a home lab, right? Same thing. I want you to set up a cloud uh, sandbox where you can play around with the services in the cloud. Thankfully, most of the providers already provide free services as they want users to try out their services, right? Before moving on to the paid offers. So most of the cloud providers, which are there like AWS, like Azure, like Google Cloud, they already have that. So it, AWS free tier, I mean, if you're not familiar, uh, for, uh, aware of it, it's a very famous, like it's a very common offering which they have. You can do, for, you can check out services free. Some services are 12 months free. Some are always free as long as you stay within a particular limit. Okay, it's very easy to set up, just go up. Uh, they take your credit card information, but they won't charge you anything. Okay, and you can, as long as you stay within the free ATN, none of the things I'm gonna be telling you are gonna charge you anything. Okay, but just remember to stay within those limits. If you go to the page free tier, it'll tell you what are the limits. And usually they alert you also if something is about to happen, but you can easily set up a free tier AWS account. Um, apart from that, you have Google. Google does the same thing. Google has like, they give you, I think $300 credit for free for 90 days, okay? So, I mean, you can check around Google Cloud, you can find out what's happening, what other things to do, okay? Uh, so I think same with Microsoft Azure also. They give you like, I think uh, $200, I might be incorrect here, but they also give you like, so there really is no excuse, guys. To, right from today, you can start experimenting on the cloud, get a hold of those services and start playing around with them, okay? For the purposes of these uh, steps, which I'm talking about, I'm gonna be using AWS, but you can really replicate them on any cloud provider, okay? So now you have a cloud provider. It's time to provision. It's time to provision some infrastructure in the cloud. Okay, but not the easy way. I don't want you go to you to go to the console 
and just click on buttons and then deploy a server. No, if you are working in the cloud, guys, the second step is to get hands on with infrastructure as code. It is one of the most basic skills you will need because believe me, there's no escaping it. Uh, most of everything in the cloud is considered to be software and infrastructure as code as will come. Okay. What, just to brief recap, like uh, if you don't know what infrastructure code is, it's basically defining infrastructure in a code template and it goes, it's processed by a, like a provider and then it, it converts into actual infrastructure in the cloud. Just write two, three lines. You can actually provision up a server. Okay. Why do we do that? Because to the console, you can't do automation, right? And nobody, if I tell you to go and provision like a hundred servers, you're not gonna go and like one, two, three, four, five, six, like provision hundred servers like that. It doesn't work like that, right? With infrastructure as code, you can automate things. You can create pipelines as we're gonna see, okay? The most common one is Terraform. Just go to Terraform website. It has amazing, like you can download it for free. There's no cost. You only get cost if you like uh, provision some very costly expensive assets, but you can just spin up a simple server on AWS. A free DS server, it's not going to cost you anything. They have template, they have tutorials already present there. Just create a server, create a VPC, and destroy them when you no longer need it. You're going to encounter lots of problems. You're going to say, hey, this is not working. This is not working. Try to fix it yourself. And believe me, you will get a lot of knowledge about how infrastructure works. But this is really a basic step to learn. Um, one tip I can give you, you can go to this one, this link, learn.hashipop.com slash terraform. And even they have like built-in labs, Without moving anywhere, you can start deploying stuff. It'll really help you to get hands on with Terraform, guys. Just get, I'm not asking you to become like a hardcore techie uh, coder or anything like that. Just five, six lines you need to deploy a server. Just try to deploy a simple server in the cloud and see what happens, okay? Believe me, you learn a lot, okay? So this is the second step. Get hands on with infrastructure as code. Okay, third step. Now, good job. You've uh, figured out how to do infrastructure as code. Now that you have a cloud sandbox and you've become comfortable with deploying like even a server, it's time to download and install Jenkins. So in cloud, most of the code is propagated via pipelines, okay? Nobody, nobody is like manually deploying code, button clicking and then copying stuff there, okay? Everything is done through pipelines. And the most common software that is used is Jenkins. It's completely free. If you're not aware, Jenkins is an open source tool. It's wisely used in DevOps and the CI/CD. You don't need to be a hardcore DevOps CI/CD expert. Just understand that Things are done through pipelines. What is a pipeline? Pipeline is an automated series of steps to, for deploying code. Okay. So if you were like, if you just wrote some Terraform code, right? Instead of like uh, uh, manually pressing the button and deploying it, you can have like uh, it set to a central repository and Jenkins will do everything. Jenkins is going to pick it up, it's going to deploy it, and it's going to send you a notification that this has been done. Okay. So I want you to learn how to propagate your infrastructure templates via Jenkins instead of doing it manually. In, ca in case you don't know to how to do it, there are some excellent free tutorials already available. Okay, just Google it. You will find lots of Jenkins tutorials. F simple pipeline. It's very easy to do. You can easily do it. I know you can do it. So don't like uh, short sell yourself here. So you've already deployed a few infrastructure. Next step is to do a pipeline thing. Okay, what's step four? So now if you've reached this far, you now have a pipeline. You know how to deploy simple server to infrastructure record, which is pretty amazing. Okay. So DevOps and the cloud go hand in hand with security. And now we're getting into the security stuff, okay? Security is one of the major concerns when it comes to pipelines. So we want to introduce some security checks into the pipeline, right? Uh, we don't want insecure code being propagated into the cloud, right? What if you've hard-coded your user ID and password into Terraform and that, that just gets copy-pasted into some like GitHub repo and all that, right? So you need to have some sort of thing there which will stop this from happening, okay? So. Simply put, uh, one thing I can recommend easily, there are many commercial tools, free tools. The one I would recommend is using Chekhov. Chekhov is a static code analysis tool for infrastructure as code. It's going to scan your template. It's going to tell you if there are any insecure packages or images being used, okay? It can be installed from the GitHub repo. You can simply point it to us, give it the path of your IAC template. It's going to scan it, and it's going to tell you whether there's any like security flaws there. So it's very easy to do. Okay, that's a simple step, downloading it and try to run it on your static, like a uh, Terraform template, see what happens. Okay, now that you've done it, let's move on to the next step, which is integrating scanning into the pipeline. So, okay, now you know how to deploy code through pipeline, right? And you know how Chekhov works. Now you want to put that Chekhov as a check into the pipeline. So once you get the hand of it, it it's time to integrate Chekhov scanning into the pipelines you made earlier. We, we don't want insecure code to stop the pipeline, right? Sorry, we want insecure code to stop the pipeline 
and we wanted to show up as a failure, right? So cloud runs in code. And once you complete this step, you will know. So what will happen is when you try to deploy some code uh, and Jenkins will start running it, it will see, okay, wait, wait, there's some issue here. This code contains security because it will call Chekhov. Chekhov will scan it and Chekhov will say, sorry, uh, this code is insecure, you can't run it. So try to do it just, uh, I believe there's already, I think a tutorial present, so it'll look like this. You can see this, uh, what do you call it? This is how it's, it'll, so it'll, be, it'll run as a test and it's gonna say, sorry, this is not secure and you can't deploy this into the cloud. So try to do it in case you face any challenges, try to troubleshoot it yourself. If you're completely stumped, reach out to me and I'll help you out, okay? Okay, so now this is pretty amazing. Uh, you've done like, uh, you know how to deploy infrastructure as code uh, and what do you call, you already know how to scan it, you know how you have a free sandbox. Now, what if you wanted to do a complete security scan of your cloud, right? Like you have an AWS account, right? You want to scan the whole cloud, like you like you scan a server, right? A complete security assessment of the cloud. This is not something you can do manually because there are like thousands and thousands of checks. But the good things, there are numerous tools present on the market, some excellent free tools also. The one I use for AWS is called Prowler. If you are using AWS like me, this is the best option. So as per the official documentation, it's an open source security tool to perform AWS best practice assessments. You know, it's gonna check your uh, account against CIS, PCI DSS, ISO 27001. You can see the screenshot it's showing you. You can download it, just Google AWS Prowler. You can download it from GitHub and try to run it once you, uh, once you configure it properly. Run it on your free AWS account and you'll see the results. So it's a very powerful tool. Definitely, if you're working in the cloud, you should get hands-on with Prowler, okay? So, okay. Now, congratulations, you know how to do a full cloud security assessment. Now, what do you want to do? So you've reached this far, congratulations. You now know how to deploy infrastructure as code, have it check for vulnerabilities, do a complete security assessment for AWS, which is the most popular cloud provider in the world. Now, what do you want to do? You want to volunteer your cloud security expertise. There are numerous, you can wait around for somebody to offer you a job. And now you can put all the projects which I've told you, those cloud security projects. You can put those on your CV. If you want more hands-on experience while waiting for your dream job, you can, I would recommend creating a profile on Fiverr or Upwork and volunteering to do cloud security reviews for very low cost. There are small, small companies, you know, like nonprofit organizations or small companies which cannot afford full-time security teams and they will happily work for you to have a cloud security review done. You can do like part-time consultancy and the best thing is it'll get, give you it'll give you real experience they will get like a full cloud security review done. Just do the steps which I've told you. You can simply run Crawler and generate a report and give it to them. And you can put that experience on your CV also. So provided you follow these steps, guys, all of these cloud security projects will go a long way and they will really, really help you to get that actual experience, hands-on experience, which I talked about. So I hope this was useful, beneficial to you. And I wish you all the best in your cloud security journey. If you feel there's more stuff I could have covered, then please do let me know and I'll be happy to add it. Uh, thank you very much, guys, and I'll see you next week in the next video.